Acting in opposition to the Latin maxim ignoramus et ignorabimus, it was David Hilbert who stated, we must know, we will know, ushering in the belief that mathematics could be the key to universal understanding. The Principia Mathematica of Bertrand Russell and Alfred North Whitehead sought to analyze the furthest extent of mathematics itself. However, it was Kurt Gödel's incompleteness theorem that showed the limits of mathematical language, noting how certain logical claims could be true but unprovable, and vice versa. In a similar way, Greg Cantor's set theory showed how there could be more than one type of infinity, deconstructing the notion of all infinities being equal in size and element in his infamously represented diagonal argument. Land follows in the tradition of Godel and Cantor in the construction of his decimal pneumogram, helping further deconstruct logical positivist claims that the only purposeful philosophical problems are those that logistics itself can solve. In a Kantian sense, numbers are not a part of nature, but are merely representatives and not things in and of themselves. Though there is much more to say on the pneumogram and its relations to the tree of life of the Kabbalah, and the lemur demons occupying each numeric syzygy of nine, and their relation to spiral time and complexities, this video merely looks to the limits of logic and by extension language, as mathematics is nothing but the language of physics itself. In short, logic, and by extension language, has its limits. In his talk on passing from digital to symbolic, Yukui comments on how the language of man is very much alive, leading symbols to change into new representations from what they were previously meant to represent. This transformative history is preserved by digital media in the form of a collective memory, a hauntology of various concepts, where the past forever stays linked in the present. Huey believes it is the melancholia of modern-day man that leads to the creation of such mental museums, since it is modernity that has disintegrated and destroyed cultural and ideological cosmologies of order. Unlike ancient eschatology, the destruction of the old worlds do not bring new ones into being, but rather the destruction brought about by modernity merely is used to adapt to the current and already established order. This could be compared to the entropic disintegration and deterritorialization caused by capitalism itself, where culture and ideologies and the symbolic representations which structure them dissolve away in the world. Consumerism proves to be the death blow for symbolism itself. Technology with its memory is the Derridian supplement that adds in the absent past into our era. Though we are not of the past, the past can still belong to us in the present through this process. Nonetheless, technology still desymbolizes. Etymologically, Huey relates the symbolic to the diabolic, where symbols unite and the diabolic divides. However, as with all opposites, each is reliant upon the other's existence. After all, how could one be united if they were not first divided? It is in this inner relation of opposites that we see man's symbolic self interned in a mausoleum of AI collective memory. The more technology destroys traditional symbols through accelerationism, the more melancholia that is produced by the collective memory, i.e. the museum of traditional symbolic artifacts that AI makes for man. These museums are melancholic as they are but memorials of man. Technology is making memories of us as though we were already dead, and the more memories it makes, the more it destroys our current symbolic self. Just as traditional symbols were usurped by pop symbols of consumerism, digital objects will lead to artificial symbols that will further desymbolize. Thus we see the interplay of the two poles, those of artificial and digital AI, and those of the natural symbols of man, of the artificial and the natural earth. To quote Jacques Salul, technique has penetrated the deepest recesses of the human being. The machine tends not only to create a new human environment, but also to modify man's very existence. The milieu in which he lives is no longer his. He must adapt himself, as though the world were new, to a universe for which he was not created. He was made to go six kilometers an hour, and he goes a thousand. He was made to eat when he was hungry and to sleep when he was sleepy. Instead, he obeys a clock. He was made to have contact with living things, and he lives in a world of stone. He was created with a certain essential unity, and he is fragmented by all the forces of the modern world.
Through this, AI creates its own symbolic system. Just as man makes his own symbolic system of imagination to distance himself from nature and make meaning, AI in a sense is doing the same. Through the symbolic link and indirect relationship between AI and us, where one symbolic system expands as the other system shrinks, Huey attempts to overcome this indirect relationship and opposition between man and AI, or nature and technology, through the concept of cosmotechnics, which is the unification of cosmic and moral order through technical activities, linking physis with technus, but of which is not nostalgic. Huey cites Gilbert Simondon. Now, Simondon's work uh, is primarily known on individuation, and it's had profound impacts upon Deleuze's own philosophy, so let's explain this real quick. In short, to Simondon, the human subject is the effect of individuation, resulting in a never-ending process of individuation, or, as Deleuze might have worded, a continual state of becoming other. Thus, the individuation process is always incomplete, always continually becoming a new being. Now to Huey, Simondon relates a naturality between geological and technical environments through the example of a TV antenna, which, through transmitting frequencies, bridges the gap between human networks and geographical regions, while still dealing with signification itself. Huey wants not to simply reduce symbols to digital forms of nostalgia stored in the museums of AI collective memories, but wants to see if digitalization can reactivate the symbols through a technological form of anemnesis or remembrance, even though such a thing was never inscribed upon the AI from the start. To Huey, it is only through a sense of outsideness, of the cosmos itself, being admitted into the technic that will allow the symbolic to re-emerge. To Huey, we would need to introduce a plurality of epistemologies to reappropriate technologies from their traditional purposes. This can occur when technus and cosmos combine, allowing us to pass from the digital and back to a new symbolic. What makes Huey interesting is his reliance upon the cosmos, the need for the outside to come in. In his video on the cosmotechnical nature of writing, Huey states that AI is contributing to a synchronic view of language, one that doesn't take history into account, only considering language at a specific moment in time, doing this through a new alphabet that ends up ending the Enlightenment, surpassing human intellectual potential and moving towards a singularity. It is only through technodiversities and cosmotechnics that we can move away from this impasse. To Leibniz, Chinese writing started with Chinese hexagrams, as noted in the I Ching, and moved towards pictograms. To Huey, hexagrams and pictograms in Chinese writing come from observations of the cosmos. Huey quotes Derrida on how the notion of technique can never simply clarify the notion of writing. However, to Huey, Chinese writing has rich relations that cannot be identified in phonetic writing. Furthermore, by understanding writing more as an art as opposed solely to communication, one better understands the relationship of writing to that of the Tao. To master calligraphy to Huey is to master writing, which gives spirit to the pictogram to search for the Tao through writing itself. Digital writing, of course, reduces everything to a 26-letter alphabet. To Huey, Chinese writing is not reducible to a technic, but rather relates the technic to the cosmos. To Huey, we need techno-diversities to reappropriate the new alphabet so as not to be determined by it, but rather to transform it by giving it new directions and pathways away from something as apoplectic as a singularity. The new futurism is not just about accelerationism, but also about these techno-diversities. In On the Becoming of Prometheus, Huey quotes Ray Brazier and his concepts of what Prometheanism is, stating that there is no limit to what we can achieve or the ways in which we can transform ourselves, where we need to liberate ourselves from the limits of anti-Promethean pessimism, one that imposes limits for a more open future. To Huey, however, we will then need to liberate ourselves from the determination of Prometheanism itself. As humans, we are experiencing a Promethean shame, meaning we are ashamed when situated in front of the machines we ourselves created. This is not just a psychological shame, but an existential one as well, where humans become obsolete or inferior to their AI counterparts. To Heidegger, technus is a necessity for the question of being. 
Heidegger compares Parmenides with Heraclitus, commenting on the nature of being versus becoming. Metaphysics is identical to technus, the knowledge that leads us to act in this sense. Humans to Heidegger are the uncanniest of the uncanny, das unheimlich. If human being's essence is techne, this produces a violence. Being, in other words, no longer has a home when in a state of becoming, bordering between home and homelessness, or being and becoming. This techness, the knowledge of Promethean fire, or modern technology, causes conflict, resting on the borders of being and becoming. This enlightenment of rationality, which does not understand limits, takes us towards frightening and unknown futures of infinite possibility. To Huey, this thinking can be dogmatic in a sense. Thus, we need to reevaluate Prometheanism itself. The correlation between Prometheus and Techne becomes transcendental and universal, since Techne will be replaced by cosmotechnics, where technics is shaped by cosmology, and where cosmology varies from culture to culture. To reformulate Prometheanism, we need to replace the technus with cosmotechnics, becoming de-Europeanized, where there are different concepts of nature across various cultures that must be incorporated, like those of the Eastern tradition. Huey, however, seems to understand the limits of syntactics and thus rationality itself, which was a critique of the Frankfurt School. Huey, however, does not reject rationalism. Huey cites an essay he wrote called Algorithmic Catastrophe, linked below, where algorithmic catastrophes are caused by a failure of reason, noted in the progress of people, resulting in the need for contingency plans. The contingency for algorithmic catastrophe is our current situation with AI, which occur commonly. Unfortunately, as Norbert Wiener showed, AI is faster than us, creating a gap that produces disastrous effects that we will not be quick enough to catch. It is this outsideness that will reorient us as a species. We are not using technus to overcome physics or nature any longer through contingency. Instead, we are dealing with AI, algorithmic catastrophes. Hui cites Miel Lassu showing how contingency are not exceptions, but an unavoidable norm, though his system deals with natural systems as opposed to technical ones. To Miel Lassu, post-Kantian thought is dominated by the belief of correlationism, and how we cannot be or exist without the world, and vice versa, thus avoiding the problem of how to describe the world as it is, since we only see it through ourselves. The chaotic world shows there is no causality to anything. Thus, by critiquing correlationism, we can return to the infinite. However, as AI shows, we are incapable of truly understanding the very things, the very AI, we construct. Thus, the absolute or infinite rests outside of thought and reasoning, resting in the unknown. By distancing ourselves from correlationism, we can better see this unknown other from the outside. There is no contingency, however, for a completely inconsistent being. Since a constantly inconsistent being cannot change as it is always changing, this chaos shows the absoluteness of contingency. There is no being, only becoming. Thus, catastrophes aren't accidents anymore. They are just normal happenings. Thus, algorithmic catastrophes, unlike normal catastrophes, are beyond our control and human capacity to even comprehend. The unknown, the black box, becomes our explanation for everything. Thus, reason is exteriorized in the technical object to Huey, where we make more entropy through automatization and destructive AI. To Huey, the greatest fear is trying to live with such a technus, where culture and technus are basically incompatible, and this is something Prometheanism cannot currently solve. To Huey, we need to reinvent a new way to be with this technus, which is not a cooperative transhumanism or even an ontological posthumanism to Huey, but it is one which resists AI and human alienation. Huey states we should try and set the exteriorized rationality of technology to serve reason. This is the hope of Prometheanism 2.0, where we end modernity through modernity itself. In my own opinion, cosmotechnics looks promising as a means of diversifying our discourse, leading to new potentialities. However, it will not be able to compete with algorithmic AI making its way in from the outside. Again, we need to consider the limits of language and take into account how AI will transform us faster than we can probably ever transform it, unlike how Huey thinks. 
Currently, it's tough for me to envision humans and AI existing harmoniously, as Huey claims, as we have all been bitten by the fang noumena already, turning us more into it at an accelerated rate, finding it doubtful to change something that is already slipping outside of our control. Though I do not believe we can know anything a priori or through a rationalistic approach, as it is limited to symbols and sense phenomenon, a posteriori or empirical approach by way of experience can further our insights. Like land, the outside must come inside in order to accelerate the process. Like Lovecraft harkens back to the mysteries of the cosmos for the sense of outsideness in a certain sense. It is the calling of Cthulhu. As Lovecraft writes, when the stars were right, they could plunge from world to world through the sky, but when the stars were wrong, they could not live. Reality is a series of fictions that we turn into facts, whether through the mode of numbers or non-mathematical symbols, as I brought up at the start of this video. The result, however, is the same. The noumena will need to make itself known from the outside in order to accelerate us onward. Man cannot know nature on his own. Perhaps the alien will present another pathway or passage for us people. In short, adjusting our language in ways of a priori thinking will not aid us as we accelerate. We are limited by our language. It is the box we cannot escape outside of, no matter how much we change the inner contents of the box itself. There are limits to what we can achieve, and those limits come from language. The noumena is needed to come in from the outside. Nothing we do on the inside will aid in our knowing. We are just reinterpreting and deconstructing the text. It is a box we cannot seem to escape.